Hello, and welcome to another video in the Harvard portion of the FTC YouTube series, created and hosted by Team Ultra 10539. Today's video will be talking about the commonly used drivetrain designs in FTC. Tank drive, um, tank drive with omni wheels, holomic drive uh, with omni wheels, and mechanism drive. Swerve drive is another option, but it is very complicated and a bit beyond the scope of this video. We will also discuss the various ways of powering drive wheels, direct drive, chain drive, gear drive, and belt drive. The first kind of drivetrain is a six-wheel tank drive, which can be seen here. This kind of drivetrain is very effective for scenarios where you need high grip, such as the rescue competition from a few years back when robots needed to climb these steep ramps. It is very effective at maintaining traction, and probably the strongest drivetrain out of all of these. However, it lacks the capability to move in any direction other than directly forwards and directly backwards. The second kind of drivetrain that we can talk about is a tank drive with omni wheels as its rear wheels. This kind of drivetrain is excellent for simpler robots as it allows for these rear wheels to slide as the front wheels control the angle of the robot directly. This kind of drivetrain can work, but it's probably the weakest due to the low traction offered by the omni wheels. Its major advantage, though, is that it is definitely the simplest of all drivetrains and able to turn quickly due to these omni wheels, which can slide from side to side. The third drivetrain we'll discuss is a holomic drive with omni wheels. This is probably the weirdest looking drivetrain out of all those that are most commonly used in FTC. But since Omni wheels can move in sidewards as well as forwards and backwards, as we saw on this drivetrain, um, this allows for very efficient robot movement in a very compact design. Our team has never built one of these, but the many teams who I've spoken to about it say that it is relatively weak and can be pushed out of the way by other robots easily. It also requires four individually driven wheels, so you'll be using four of your allotted motors on just the drivetrain. The fourth drivetrain is the mechanism drivetrain, which is most commonly used by FTC teams. This drivetrain is excellent because it allows for excellent maneuverability in any direction without sacrificing as much of the traction that a holomic omni drive does. Mechanism wheels still have great traction, as we saw during Relic Recovery, in which they actually could climb onto the balancing stone, contrary to what many teams believe. This drivetrain, however, again needs four motors, leaving fewer motors for robot mechanisms. The mechanism wheels work in such a way that when they spin in different directions, they can move sidewards as well as forwards and backwards. More details on this can be found in another video. To drive a robot's wheels, wheels can be mounted directly to the output shaft of the motor, like they are here, and this configuration is called direct drive. We use this method on our competition robot. Using direct drive reduces the risk of mechanical failure by as fewer moving parts are required. However, many teams would consider this method bad because it puts too much stress on the motor, which is a concern. This is why most teams use either gears, chains, or belts to drive their robot's wheels. Driving the main wheels with gears is something that many newer teams use, but it often causes many major problems. This is because the gears, especially the Tetrix ones, wear out quickly and begin grinding, preventing the robot from moving. We would advise against using gears uh, for your drivetrains unless it is absolutely necessary. A further guide on using gears will be linked below so that if you do need to use them, you can. Using chains is much more common among FTC teams. In general, chains can withstand higher torque than gears, but it can also slip in some situations. Chains also allow teams to place their motors farther from the drive wheels, so if you are pressed for space, this may be an option to consider. However, make sure you get the chain, tension of the chain exactly right. A further guide on how to use chain and how to, how to assemble it and how to tension it properly will be linked in the description below. A third but far less common method of driving wheels on a robot is by using belts, like they are on this particular robot here. These outer wheels are driven by belts, which are connected to the center wheel here, which is connected to these motors via these, gear, via these gears here. Um, this method um, is, much, is much smoother than using chains because belts can bend easily. However, belts can still slip just like chains do, and also belts must, if you are to use belts on your robot, you must measure the exact size directly and order that size uh, precisely online. This is because belts are manufactured to be a certain size and cannot be cut to size like chains can, um, and therefore are much less commonly used by teams because they are much less flexible. I hopefully this video has helped you to understand a bit more about all the drivetrains that are commonly used in FTC. As always, if you have any questions, please reach out to us at ultragrounding.edu or leave your question in the comments below. Thank you for watching.